And nearly one month after the double Jerusalem bus bombing attacks that killed two Israelis, the Shin Bet security agency on Tuesday revealed details of the attack. According to the security agency, six days after the bombings, its operatives arrested Aslam Farouk, a 26-year-old ISIS supporter from East Jerusalem, who recently completed his engineering studies. The investigation revealed that he arrived by motorcycle to the bus stop at the entrance to Jerusalem, where he planted the first bomb, and then drove to the second site, the Ramot intersection, where he planted another device. He detonated both bombs by cell phone. Two Israelis, 16-year-old Alia Chechupak and Ethiopian immigrant Tadasa Tasumi Ben Maada were killed in the deadly attack. This comes one day after security forces announced the bust of a massive terrorist bomb plot planned for Israel. A number of terrorist operatives were arrested shortly before the attack. ILTV's Steve Leibovitz reports. It could have been a mass terror incident planned for December 14th. The bomb plot was foiled by the Shin Bet Security Service, which today announced it had arrested a number of suspects involved in the plot in the West Bank and uncovered others in the Gaza Strip. Suspects have been questioned for the past two weeks. The bomb that the terrorists built was ready for use, but was seized by security officials before it could be detonated. The suspects were members of the Fatah-affiliated Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade with planning assistance from Hamas terrorist operatives in Gaza. The bomb is similar to that which exploded last month in Jerusalem, killing two people. Leading terrorists named in the plot include Gaza explosives expert Ahmed Hajjaj. In the West Bank, security officials arrested several key suspects in Tolkarim and Kabatia. The Shin Bet said that it holds Hamas in Gaza responsible for planning the attack by directing the West Bank operatives. Prime Minister Yair Lapid praised the security operation, saying, The war against terrorism and terrorist infrastructure continues every day on every front. The security forces will continue to act at all times to cut off all attempts to harm us. And moving on, the Gulf state of Oman moved a step closer to expanding its boycott of Israel this week. According to the Omani WAF news agency, the country's current law is being amended to include a boycott of all sports, culture and economic contacts with Israel. It also seeks to ban in-person or online interaction with Israelis. To date, the law bans interaction with the, quote, Zionist entity for private and public figures. The measure passed in the Omani Shura Council and will move to a debate before a final vote. Oman and Israel have no official diplomatic relations, though the two countries did have unofficial trade relations, and Israel has hoped to expand its peace agreement with the country under the Abram Accords. In 2018, then-Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu even flew to Oman for an unannounced meeting at the invitation of the now-deceased Omani Sultan Qaboos bin Said. Though so far, Omani leaders have balked at calls to join the Abram Accords with Israel, after the UAE, Bahrain, Morocco and Sudan have done so. Oman is even opposed to Israeli planes flying over its airspace. Earlier this year, Saudi Arabia agreed to allow Israeli to use its airspace, but Oman continues to refuse, forcing Israeli flights to Asia to use a much longer route. Officials in Oman insist it will change its policy only after the Israeli-Palestinian conflict has been resolved. 